Hey, what is going on everybody? So today on the channel, we're going to be taking a look at Safari version 14. So Apple went ahead and released a Safari 14, I guess to match iOS 14 and iPadOS 14 on macOS Catalina. Now we thought we were getting all of the, you know, Safari features whenever macOS Big Sur came out, but we now have them here in macOS Catalina. So I figured I'd make a video telling you everything new here in Safari version 14. So if you haven't already, you can go ahead and download this in your system preferences under the software update. It is an actual separate download, so it's not a Catalina update or anything like that. It is just a plain Safari 14 update. So probably the biggest change here is the new customizable start page. So you can see that I've already customized mine just a little bit here. Uh, you can now do things like change your background and also uh, see your privacy report and other different categories that you can put here on the start page. Now, this is a start, no pun intended, but uh, this is a good start. I, I would say that you know it needs more customizable features. You really can't do much right now. Uh, if you want to customize it, you go down here to this bottom right corner, click on this little icon, and you can see that you have all these different categories here. So you can have your favorites, frequently visited, your privacy report, series suggestions, reading list, and a background image. And that's it. You can't even rearrange these, which I find pretty weird. Uh, so you literally can just check them on and off, okay? Like you can't do anything else. So I find that pretty weird that you couldn't like, you know, hey, I want my privacy report to be at the top at all times, not my favorite. So that's a little strange to me that they wouldn't allow you to do that. Now your background image is right here, so you can actually scroll to the right and you can choose from some of these new background photos uh, that Safari has for you. Or if you hit this plus button, you can choose your own custom background photo. Now I've actually just chosen one of these generic Safari ones here and I think it looks pretty cool. But yeah, that's pretty much it here for the new customizable start page. I think it's a good first attempt, but it can definitely use some more customization features, I think, uh, in the future. The next thing here to go ahead and just get it out of the way, they always say this every single year, of course, but Safari has improved performance so it loads much faster, and then they always compare it to things like Chrome, and also Safari is now optimized much better so it's much more power efficient. So they claim you can stream more video than other browsers and all that good stuff. So just want to go ahead and get those out of the way, but yeah, they say that every time. You now have favicons in your tabs. So if we go to google.com, for example, here, and then I open another tab, you can now see that we have the Google icon right here. So uh, this is a little favicon, little icon uh, here in the tabs. It's now on by default. You still can toggle it on and off yourself if you go to preferences, go to the tabs, and then it's right here, show website icons in tabs. You can see them uh, appearing and disappearing as I click on that. But from now on, they're on by default. I really like the favicons. I've had them on uh, for a very long time now. They just make things kind of much easier for me to quickly identify a tab when you see something like that Google logo. Now, another thing here with tabs is they claim that you can now see more tabs at once. So there's a new tab bar design which allows you to see more of your tabs on screen at once. So if I just start spamming some tabs here, you can see that, well, we're now kind of stuck here because I'm no longer hitting the key. Uh, you'll definitely be able to kind of identify your tabs a little bit better. And of course, when we get farther down, you can actually start to see the names of tabs. So they kind of just made the sizing of them a little bit better uh, here in the tab bar. Now another thing with your tabs is you can now see website previews. So if you hold over a tab, you can now see what that website is looking like. And just for example, oh, we'll go to the Wall Street Journal, for example, here. And then we can click on this other tab. Now if we hover over that one, you can see exactly what it looks like uh, in real time and same with that Google tab and all that. So 
pretty neat there. Now Safari now also features uh, translation and this is in beta of course but if a page is able to be translated you will have a little icon pop up right here in your uh, address bar and you can click on that and actually translate the page. Now again like I said it is in beta so it's going to get better and better but things may not work properly at first but it is very cool that they have that now. If you head on over to the Mac App Store, you will see a brand new Safari extensions page. So this looks much better than the previous one here, and it kind of showcases some extensions and then have different categories for you, top free, top paid. So it's nice to see all these extensions in a much better format here in the Mac App Store. So if you want to check that out, of course, when you're in Safari, you just click Safari in the menu bar and you can hit Safari extensions and it brings up the Mac App Store for you just like that. Now another thing with extensions is there's a new web extension API so it's going to allow uh, developers to bring Chrome extensions to Safari so uh, that is going to be pretty interesting to see. And some new privacy features for extensions allow you to grant access to only specific sites so if an extension only needs to work on one site you don't want it accessing all of your websites you can just click on it and allow it to only the websites that you want it to have access to. Now one of the final major features here is the new privacy report and other privacy tracking settings. So you now notice this new icon right up here. This is your privacy report. So if you click on this, it's going to show you the privacy report for the specific website that you're on. So well, here we are in Google and it claims that one tracker was prevented from profiling you. And you can then click on this and you can actually see the trackers that it blocked. So this is basically Safari's uh, prevent cross-site tracking option, but now we actually get to see what it is doing. This is always something that I was wondering, like why didn't Safari do this in the first place? I mean, other browsers have had this for a long time. Yes, every browser is able to block third-party trackers. But Safari never told you what it was even blocking, so you never even knew if it was working. So it's nice to see that they finally are showing us what they are blocking. So when you're on a specific website, of course, you have the uh, trackers for that website, so individual privacy report for each website. If you go to your start page and you have the privacy report uh, enabled here on your start page, you can click on it and it's going to bring up a privacy report for uh, all the websites that you have visited. So you can see that it does individual websites here. So the Wall Street Journal as well as all news websites are terrible when it comes to trackers and you can literally click on them and see every single one that it blocked. So that's pretty cool. And then it has stuff over the last 30 days of course, how many trackers and websites and all that stuff. So yeah, it finally shows you what it's actually doing. So it's about time, Safari. And the final thing here is Safari now does password monitoring. So if you save your passwords in Safari or iCloud Keychain, you will now have password monitoring. So Safari or Apple's gonna let you know, hey, this password uh, may have been in a data breach, it may be compromised, you need to change your password. And they'll also give you recommendations uh, hey, you just typed in a pretty weak looking password, you might want to consider changing that. And the final thing here is you can now easily import your settings from Google Chrome into Safari in case you decide that you don't like Chrome anymore and you want to use Safari. But guys, that's pretty much it. That's everything new here in Safari 14. What do you think about these changes? Were they needed? Do you think they could have done more? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, it'd be interesting to hear from you about what you think about Apple's privacy report. Do you think they could do much more? In my opinion, it's kind of weird to me how a company that's supposed to care so much about your privacy doesn't really implement a lot of privacy features in their web browser. Now, yeah, I know they did the block all third-party cookie things and that pretty much broke everything but still, when you look at something like Firefox, for example, and even Google Chrome now has privacy features uh, much more than Safari, it's just it's interesting to me that they don't 
put more in here. But it is nice to see that we finally know what trackers are being blocked, so that is pretty nice. But yeah guys, that's all I got for you today. Thank you all for watching as always. Be sure to click that subscribe button and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it.